Welcome to iTalk, the new program on Euronews, where you get to ask the questions. My name is Alex Taylor, and I'll make sure you get the answers. It's 50 years since Yuri Gagarin went into space, and this week you're putting your questions to those on board the International Space Station. Waiting to answer now on board are Commander Dmitry Kondryatyev, uh, Flight Engineers Katie Coleman, Paolo Nespoli, Andrei Borisenko, Ron Garan, and Alexandra Somakatyev. We're now live with the International Space Station. Hello, welcome. Let's go to a first question from a viewer on Euronews. I wonder about the International Space Station because it seems so far away from our everyday concerns. It would be interesting to find out whether this is really going to help us in ways like improving people's health, finding a cure for cancer or something like that. Is that realistic? ISS seems uh, far away from everyday concerns. Uh, can it actually bring us any health benefits? Are you doing research which can help us here who are on Earth? Uh, what are you doing to help us? Well, I guess we all want to answer that question was what we were uh, saying amongst us. Um, we're doing a lot of research on, on human beings, just finding out what happens to human beings in microgravity. And that pays off when we're trying to figure out how to go to Mars safely and be gone for longer. But it also has benefits back on Earth. Um, one of the biggest ones that jumps out is bone loss, osteoporosis. We have about 10 times the rate of bone loss as your average osteoporotic 70-year-old uh, woman. And so um, but we're, we are, we're a different kind of subject, and then we probably have simpler medical histories, and it's a little easier to study just that bone loss. And so we're doing different things, like I myself, for example, am taking some drugs that prevent osteoporosis, trying to understand um, how they interact with the body. We're looking at the loss of bone and also building bone back up. So I think that's a really important benefit. Also, a lot of cardiovascular studies, vestibular studies, understanding how our brains work. All these things bring information directly back home because these problems, um, these, these uh, bodily uh, functions happen in, on Earth as well, but sometimes they're harder to understand until you put them in a very different environment. Thank you very much indeed. Let's go to a second question. Okay, a uh, question for the crew on the International Space Station. Um, with the launch of Virgin Galactic and other commercial uh, space programs coming on stream, is there a time when you're going to be anticipating paying guests aboard your space station? You're looking forward to that? What do yeah. you actually feel about uh, 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 space tourists? Uh, are they um, a hindrance? Uh, is it good, space tourism, having people? I think seven people have already paid to be on the, the ISS. What do you feel about that? Well, I, I, personally, I, th I think the more people that could get the experience of uh, looking back on Earth and, and seeing how beautiful it is and seeing that we're all just riding on this, uh, on this fragile oasis through the, through the solar system together and they were all in this together, I think the more people that can see that, I think the better off everybody's going to be. And, uh, you know, we are all striving for that day when space travel is as is frequent and as routine as, as airline travel. And, you know, NASA and ESA and, and all the the other agencies that are involved at the International Space Station are going on to the next big thing and going on and exploring outside low Earth orbit and uh, into the solar system. And so I think it's a logical step that, we, you know, more and more people should be able to experience it. And, uh, you know, I think it's a good thing. Thank you very much indeed. Let's uh, have another question uh, from down here on Earth. Uh. Hey. What happens to the human body when you spend time in space? Uh, Katie, can you tell us what are the effects on the body? Is it difficult to keep your hair in place, for example? And why do you have long hair? Would it not be easier to cut the hair? Well, you can ask my crewmates if I should cut my hair or not. It's actually impossible to keep it in place, uh, except uh, maybe in a ponytail. But, uh, you know, it actually, it's, it looks uh, very big, but, you know, whenever I move, it moves with me. So I actually am never even aware of it until I look in a mirror or uh, see a picture on, on camera. And everything else up here is different and, and, uh, and yet um, perfectly doable. Um, Paolo has a great example of, of just learning to... Uh, look at our world in a zero gravity way instead of the way we do on Earth. We were trying to rearrange literally our dining room up here where we eat together and use the space in a nice way to interact together. And our table was just too big. It just didn't fit. 
And Paolo figured out that our table didn't have to be in this orientation like on Earth because nothing's going to fall off of it. And so our table is like at a slant, almost vertical. And in fact, everything will float away from it unless we have Velcro on there to put all of our little food packages. OK, thank you very much. Let's have uh, another question from a Euronews uh, viewer. How does it feel to see the Earth from space? A question uh, perhaps to uh, uh, Paolo Nespoli. Uh, you've been doing Twitter, you're a photographer. What does it look like when you look at Earth uh, from uh, space? What's the most beautiful things you've seen and what does Europe and perhaps Italy look like? Well, Earth, uh, it's, uh, it's a model and, and it's interesting because it changes every moment. I mean, you look down and uh, sometimes you cannot see anything at all. There are big oceans, the clouds all over the place. And sometimes uh, instead you see everything. And every time it shows itself in a different way, in a different light. Uh, the sun changes, uh, the time of the day is different, the season is different, uh, the angle of the sun, maybe there is a moon. I mean, it changes completely and it's amazing to discover uh, all the these uh, little areas, all the areas in the world, and see the peculiarity of each one of them. It's uh, really, really interesting. And it's uh, amazing the fact that I can take pictures and send it back to Earth, and people, I see the messages uh, back on Twitter, and people are really amazed by the images, and, and, and they see this planet from, from the views up here, and it's just gorgeous. Thank you very much, uh, Commander, and all the other astronauts. That was the very first uh, ever link-up between Euronews and the International Space Station. Thank you very much to the European Space Agency for arranging that live link. We'll be back down to Earth uh, next time for more of your questions on iTalk. The address is on the screen from the European Parliament here in Brussels. See you next time.